You can sort of personally testify right. to this next story. That's right. You saw a rattlesnake last week. Yeah, I did. And it wasn't in the bushes, some obscure area. This was on the American River bike trail. It was just out there in the open. So when, when it's warmer, they're out. They are out, and it's important for you and especially pet owners to be on the lookout for rattlesnakes so you can keep yourself and those dogs safe. Yeah, Jeff Marr spoke with a dog owner who learned firsthand just how big of a, how big of a problem this can be. Jeff, we heard the story of this dog, and it's not a, a happy story, is it? Well, it's happy in the sense that the dog survived, but in terms of the bills, no, not happy at all. When it comes to dogs, they just don't know any better when they see snakes and rattlesnakes. They think that it's something they can't, that can't hurt them. Well, it can, and the vet bills add up, as you're about to hear. Now, take a look at this picture. This is Angel, a five-year-old golden retriever. She was bit by a rattlesnake last week outside of her owner's home in El Dorado County. Her owner, Melody Lane, says Angel came back inside after being in the yard briefly and was acting strange and seemed distressed. She says the dog was panting heavily and didn't get up. As it turns out, Angel was bit by the rattlesnake on her right front leg, and it took days for everyone to figure out what was going on. By that time, the venom had traveled through much of her body, and she was left in critical condition in need of multiple surgeries to remove a football-sized necrosis from that bite. Angel survived, as I mentioned, but still at the vet nearly a week after the bite the bills are adding up and lane tells us that she's reached the seven thousand dollar mark with possibly another surgery to go she wants other dog owners to learn from her experience if you suspect that your dog has been bitten by a rattlesnake it's important to get it to get it medical attention immediately um, there is a very short time frame for the anti-venin to be administered uh, we did not know she was actually bit by a rattlesnake in which case necrosis can set in whether it's for an animal or for a human this is very serious business now, Lane recommends that people sign their dogs up for rattlesnake aversion clinics. It was a subject that we addressed on our morning show over the weekend. What they do is you want your dog to be aware that the snake is there okay. and you want it to avoid being anywhere near it. Uh, again, sometimes the snake will be coiled up and making a noise. You want the, the dog to be able to hear it and avoid it. Sometimes it'll just be laying stretched out across the trail and you want it to be able to smell it and again avoid it. Skills, the Hangtown Kennel Club in Placerville is hosting a clinic next weekend. The cost is $70 per dog. Their website is hangtownkc.org. And guys, we have a veterinarian in our studio this morning. And coming up in a bit, we're going to be talking to her live about some of the bigger issues that exist here and what pet owners need to know as we head deeper into the summer months. Yeah, when it gets warmer, it is certainly a concern. Thanks, Jeff. Sure. When things heat up, rattlesnakes can become a concern. We just heard from uh, Jeff earlier in the broadcast. He was talking about one lucky dog, uh, Angel, who survived it. But we wanted to get the lowdown from someone who really knows. So we'd like to introduce you to a veterinarian. This is Dr. Kate Heyman. She is with the Sacramento Veterinary Referral Center. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. It's no problem. Well, we saw the story of Angel. Mm -hmm. How common are dogs uh, getting bit by snake bite? How often does that happen? Um, well, we started seeing snake bites around April when they started rolling in. And now with the warmer summer months, um, we're probably seeing upwards of about three, four a day. Um, there was one day that I had three in a three in a row come in. So it's fairly common. It's one of those standard emergencies that we see. We say, oh, it's another rattlesnake bite. Time to get out the antivenin. So. so if they get them in quickly enough, it's that simple. If they wait, then you have problems. So the antivenin, it's thought to be most efficacious if you give it within four hours of the actual bite itself. Once you get to one, two, three days out, it's thought to be less efficacious at that point. So it's better if they are bitten that they get in sooner rather than later for the antivenin. So when we saw Jeff's story on Angel, we saw some problems come about. What are mm -hmm. those problems? Um, so Angel's case is a little bit more, it's, it's very unique actually, in that we don't usually expect to see tissue necrosis at the site of the bite itself. And most of the time we can go ahead, we can monitor it, give them the antivenin, and they tend to do uh, pretty well on that, on that uh, therapy. Um, but in Angel's case, there just happened to be a lot more necrosis at the site and whether or not, you know, we just weren't able to address it sooner or what actually happened. But she seemed to react a lot more uh, severely than we would normally expect other dogs to. So um, if we do have tissue necrosis, sometimes we can say we just watch it, make 
sure that the dog is doing okay otherwise and the tissue should come off by itself. In Angel's case, she had a very large patch of uh, tissue necrosis and she already had a fever. She had blood work changes that were consistent that she was very systemically ill at that point. So we needed to go ahead and get that tissue off so that we could get her to feel better. So is Angel gonna be okay? She's gonna be okay, yeah. She has um, the, the area that they had to take off, the surgery service did a wonderful job in that um, they removed the whole area of the original tissue necrosis, um, but they had to leave the original site open because it was so large, we couldn't get enough skin coverage to get over that site. And so she actually had to stay in hospital with us for a while so we could go ahead and watch, make sure that there was no more progression of the necrosis and to go ahead and get closure on that site. Well, here's the problem. A lot of people live in areas where there may be snakes. Mm -hmm. Your dog goes out to play, comes in. You didn't see yeah. what happened. How do you know? What should you be looking for? Um, it's, it's the same story every time. People are sitting in their house. They hear their dog yelp out. It's in the backyard. They come in and then they notice potentially there's puncture marks. There's, um, in Angel's case, it was really subtle as far as the signs. I mean, she's a golden. She's very happy. Sure. She barely shows you that she's sick, um, but it was more just not feeling well, not lying down, um, changes in appetite, things like that. The owners just had to pick up on because we often do see the puncture marks and the swelling, but sometimes we don't. Um, sometimes the owners notice there's something wrong with their dog. They bring them in. We happen to find puncture marks and that's our answer. So your best advice to a pet owner? Um, well, I, I spend a lot of time at the American River working out things like that. And um, I don't think people are as aware as they should be necessarily because um, we definitely see a lot more cases down by the American River, things like that. People let their dogs off leash and um, you know, one minute the dog's got its head in a bush and the next minute they yelp and they, and they run out. So um, it's just be aware and keep your dogs on leash in areas that you, rattlesnakes would be seen. Dr. Kate Heyman with the Sacramento Veterinary Referral Center. We thank you so much yeah, for taking time no out of your busy schedule. We appreciate no it. No problem.